Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Bryn and here I usually talk about my life and studies, but in today's video I'm going to be telling you how I travelled the world at 18 on my gap year. The video is going to be broken up into a few different sections. First of all, how I saved up to travel. Second, how I planned my travelling. And third, how my travelling actually went. First of all, I should introduce uh, sort of what my gap year was. Basically, when I was 18, I left home uh, and I travelled to Europe. Very classic Australian thing to do, I think. I was very lucky that I could do it before the pandemic, obviously. Um, but I travelled first to the UK and then France. Then I repaired in Italy for a while. I also travelled to Scotland and Ireland. Um, and then later I lived in the UK and then after that I lived in Spain for a bit with my partner as well. So that was my gap year. I also travelled to a whole bunch of other countries while I was there as well, but that's just sort of broadly what my gap year was. Um, and my gap year definitely changed a lot uh, while I was on it, but I will speak more about that uh, at the end of the video. Anyway, first of all, I'm going to talk about how I saved enough money to go travelling. Now, obviously, traveling can be quite a big expense, especially flights from Australia. They run, you know, in the thousands of dollars to get from Australia to Europe. So I think that that's definitely something to think about. I was uh, very lucky in a way, I suppose, that I'd worked a lot of my teenage years. So I had a lot of money saved up and, you know, money from birthdays and stuff as well. But by the time I left Australia, I had about $25,000, maybe I think I had about 27000 saved up um, at 18 and I decided that I would like to travel with that money. I didn't buy a car or anything when I was in high school. Um, I just worked and saved pretty much to go traveling with. Um, and obviously I would say that if you can get uh, a job and start work when you're uh, in high school, I think that that's a really good way to gain experience, especially just working in something like a cafe. I worked in a restaurant, I worked dairy, but working like that is a really good way to save a little bit of money for travel if you're interested in going overseas. Bear in mind, you don't have to save up as much as I did. You don't have to go for a year. You can go for a month if you want. You can go on one of the Contiki tours. Like There are so many different things that you can do to, to travel the world when you're younger. You don't necessarily need to go on a gap year and you know fully live and work overseas that's not for everyone and that's fine um in saying that though i should mention that it's incredibly expensive uh to fly as i said to get visas um the british visa was very expensive because you have to pay a health surcharge uh the eu visa is not expensive at all um it's like 70 bucks you just rock up to the office and you get it um the british one was definitely more expensive though um, so yeah, that was the financial side of things. And I, for the first month and a half, I backpacked, uh, staying in hostels. I was solo traveling. Then I lived in Italy for a while as an au pair. If you're interested in hearing my au pair story, check out next week's podcast, not next week, the week after, the week after's podcast. And I'll tell you all about, uh, my time as an au pair, which was riveting to say the least. Um, but yeah, I was in a pair for a few months. And then after that, I left, I left that job and I stayed in Rome for about a month in a hostel, which was just like pissing money down the drain. Um, and then I went on and lived in England for 11 months. And obviously when I was in England, I was working. So then I was uh, making back a bit of the money that I had spent while traveling around. I definitely wouldn't say I regret spending the money. I think that spending the money was the best thing I could have done at the time. Obviously, I've met my partner. I've had these amazing experiences all over the world. So I think that I have no regrets. Money that I ended up spending overseas. And I don't actually know what it was because I never kept track of it. Um, but yeah, it, it costs a lot <laughs> to travel like that, I think. Um, anyway, moving on, I'm going to tell you how I planned my gap year. Now, I am a planner at heart, and you should all know that already. You know how many uh, how many bloody planning systems I have. So planning my gap year was something that was fun and fairly easy for me. Um, but basically, I started off uh, by making a list of all of the countries in Europe, countries that I really wanted to visit, countries that I would visit but didn't mind about, uh, and countries I wouldn't visit at all. Because there were some countries I just didn't feel 
particularly safe in or interested in going to. Um, and then from that, I made a plan of uh, for these first few weeks that I am in Europe, this is where I'll go. Um, and I came up with uh, four or five countries that I want to travel to in the first few weeks before I was going to live in Italy as an au pair. Uh, from that, I made a map of every town that I wanted to stop in uh, and the things to do in that town and how I would go on my walking tour around the town. Now, I get that that level of planning is probably too much for most people. I get that. Um, but I really enjoyed doing that. So that's what I did. I also found, you know, obviously you do a lot of research into hostels and hotels and places to stay and things like that. Um, reading all of the, the reviews, obviously. Um, and yeah, that was, then I would write down the information of each of the hotels. So my parents had it if they needed to have it. It was on like an Excel spreadsheet, um, the addresses, the phone numbers, everything. And also, this was especially important when I was in London. I planned, like I mapped my tube journey places. And I wrote it down in a little book because it was really difficult to figure out where to go originally. I think that that's a pretty commonplace thing to be confused about, especially if you've only ever come from a small country town like me. Uh, the tube system is the first of its kind I ever saw. So I had to kind of plan it in a way. But yeah, I definitely think that I got to make the most out of my trip because I spent so long planning each thing. Um, it meant that I got to see the places I was really interested in, the places that I didn't really care about. I just didn't plan to visit, basically. Um, and if I didn't have enough time in a day, then I would just sort of rejig my plans uh, to, to suit a bit more, basically. Um, but yeah, I also planned out a whole lot of places to eat in. Um, yeah, like I, I made walking tour maps, like I fully planned stuff. I'll see if I can insert any of the things uh, in now. And if I do, I will talk about them. <laughs> but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find them because I think I actually deleted everything. Um, which was probably a stupid decision. Um, I could have made a book or something out of that. But yeah, basically I just, my process was I planned, my process was I uh, researched what there was to do in each place, uh, researched where to stay in each place, and then I figured it out from there. Um, and I planned my route around to each of the spots I wanted to stop at. I planned the transport, everything. Um, and for me, I felt like that level of planning, at least at that time in my like travel experience, my travel journey, was the right thing to do. Because when I first arrived, I was very, I won't say naive, but I'd never really traveled uh, internationally like that before. So that was a big change. And I was doing it by myself, obviously. And I was a young woman alone, um, which shouldn't be remarkable, but unfortunately it is. So yeah, I think that I think that all of that helped me stay a bit safer, um, and it definitely made me feel a bit safer. Finally, I'm going to tell you how I stayed living and traveling overseas uh, and continued my gap year even after my funds would have run out. Obviously, there are places you can travel to that are a lot less expensive than where I traveled to. I traveled to some of the most expensive countries in the world. So please bear that in mind. Your trip does not need to, to be an expensive trip or even a big trip. Um, but basically for one and a half months, all I did was travel. I traveled, um, as I said before, around the UK, around France, around Switzerland, which is Jesus Christ, so expensive, um, around Italy. And so yeah, I did all my travel there and that was one and a half months of my travels. And obviously that was just spending money. Um, I wasn't spending enormous amounts of money on luxury things, but you know, it's expensive to stay places. It's expensive to eat places. Um, and in that time I didn't, I, it wasn't like I was choosing to be a real budget traveler. I stayed in hostels, but if I wanted to eat some nice food, I just went and ate some nice food and that was it. Like there was no, I didn't necessarily decide not to do certain things because of their cost. I'm a lot more stingy now. Um, not that you'd be able to tell from my last video, which was my uh, April, sorry, March budget. Um, we went out a lot in March, but that's not typical for us. I'm typically the stingiest person you will ever meet. 
Um, anywho, uh, we, yes. Anyway, um, we, anyway, I went, after that, I went to Italy where I stayed with a host family as an au pair. I won't go into that, but that was an experience where I lost a lot of money. Um, please, I will link our podcast below when it comes out, but it is a banging story. Um, anyway, so that was a lot of uh, sunk costs, but then I moved to Rome. I stayed in Rome for a month while I waited for my visa to the UK. By that stage, I had already got a job working in one of the hostels that I stayed in. Um, it was like a boutique hostel, hotel kind of situation. Um, and I was just like, that was just so lucky that I connected with those people that I got that job. Like that was just remarkable that that all fell into place like that, like bizarre. Anyway, stayed in Rome for a month, really nice hostel, super cool. Um, but obviously costs a lot of money, um, costs like, I want to say about 30 or $40 a night, um, which doesn't seem like a lot. Um, but that still is a lot. Let me see how much it was. I'll figure out how much it was. Many unbearable hours later. So all in all, I spent about a thousand bucks staying at this one hostel. Um, which is fine. I needed to do it then. And I got out of the situation I was in, but still it's a lot of money, especially if you're stingy. I had a lot of pasta that month, just plain pasta and sauce. Um, Sorry, I, my computer's making some baby noises, but that's fine. Um, there, yeah, then I moved to the UK, and when I was in the UK, I was obviously being paid minimum wage. Uh, I wasn't even being paid London uh, living wage, but that's a pretty common thing. Uh, minimum wage in the UK is far lower than living wage. Um, living wage in London is £11, I think, and I was being paid about 9 Um So that was a challenge, but I still saved some money while I was there. Um, and yeah, I basically, I had enough to live on, but that was just because as I said before, I'm kind of stingy. Um, but yeah, I, I lived there. I traveled, I stayed in multiple different share houses. The cost of housing in London is really high. So that was definitely a big expense for me. But apart from that, I just traveled. Um, I spent time with my friends, all of that. Um, and yeah, I was lucky enough to find a job so that I could continue to travel and continue to live overseas. If I didn't have that job though, I definitely would have had to have come home sooner because I was in such an expensive country. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing this sort of story time, uh, informative, I'm not sure video. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you again next week. Bye.